In this video, I'm going to take a look at the greatest individual playoff run in every NBA team's history. It goes without saying that some choices were easier than others based on the history of these franchises. But nonetheless, I had fun making this video, and you should have fun watching it. Because that's what life's all about. Life's about having fun. It doesn't matter if your wife cheats on you, right? <laughs> anyway, let's get to the video. Atlanta Hawks, Cliff Hagen, 1958. You're probably saying, Cliff who? Exactly. The Hawks don't exactly have the greatest history history of playoff success, although back in the late 50s, early 60s, in the Bob Pettit era, they were one of the better teams in the league. Shockingly, it wasn't Pettit who takes the crown here, as Cliff Hagen was the team's best player and the best player in the postseason in 1958 when the Hawks won it all, their only championship in franchise history. Hagen's best game of the playoffs came in Game 1 of the 1958 Western Division Finals, where he dropped in 38 points and 17 rebounds on 57% shooting. Boston Celtics, Larry Bird, 1986. For a team that has 17 championships, it wasn't the easiest choice to make, but then again, it wasn't that difficult considering 1986 Larry Bird is one of the greatest players of all time. And his playoff run was no different, averaging 26, 9, and 8 a game on super efficiency. And it's fitting that his best game of the postseason was the last game of the postseason in Game 6 at home versus the Rockets to clinch his third and final NBA championship. Bird put up a 29-point triple-double, including 11 rebounds and 12 assists on high efficiency. Brooklyn Nets, Jason Kidd, 2003. Not only is Jason Kidd a legendary respecter of women and an incredible drunk driver, he was also pretty good at playing basketball. I almost went with Kevin Durant's 2021 postseason, but hey, it's not my fault he decided to wear shoes that were too big and he didn't even make the conference finals. So I went with Kidd's finals run in 2003, where he averaged 20 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists, albeit on pretty bad efficiency and in a pretty bad conference. Kidd's best game of the postseason was in Game 3 of the Eastern Conference Finals versus the Pistons, where he dropped 34 points, 12 rebounds, 6 assists, and 4 steals on great efficiency. Nobody remembers this, but the Nets played the Spurs in the Finals that year, and Kidd, a free agent, nearly became a San Antonio Spur. Charlotte Hornets, Baron Davis, 2001. Yeah, sorry to all my Hornets fans out there, but your franchise doesn't exactly have the best track record of success in the playoffs. So it was pretty slim pickings, but I went with B. Diddy's 2001 postseason season where he averaged 18 points, 4 rebounds, 6 assists, almost 3 steals a game on incredible efficiency, and had the team one game away from the conference finals. Ironically enough, Davis's best game of the postseason run, in my opinion, came in Game 7 of the conference semifinals versus the Bucks. He dropped 29 points and 2 rebounds with 6 assists, including 5 three-pointers, although he did shoot just 44% from the foul line, but it was not enough. Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan, 1991. You had to know that it was going to be some MJ postseason, and there were definitely plenty to choose from, but I decided to go with his first title run, because to me, that was the best combo of efficiency and volume that he ever had. Averaging an efficient 31 points a game, 6 rebounds, 8 assists, 2 steals, and a block during the playoff run, his numbers in the finals were even more incredible. And the best game of his incredible postseason, to me, came in Game 2 of the 91 NBA Finals. Down 1-0, Jordan put up 33 points, 7 rebounds, and 13 assists on a ridiculous 15 of 18 shooting from the field. The Bulls would then go on to win four in a row to capture their first championship in the Plummer era. Cleveland Cavaliers, LeBron James, 2016. Although to me, LeBron has had better individual postseasons with Cleveland like 2018 and 2009. Those seasons came up short and to be honest with you, nothing compares to winning a championship against a team that broke the single season record for wins and doing it in comeback fashion for a city that hadn't won a championship in over 50 years. Oh, yeah, and LeBron also led the series in every single stat category. The best game of LeBron's 2016 playoff run, and in my opinion, the best game of his career, was in Game 6 of the 2016 Finals. 41 points, 8 rebounds, 11 assists, 4 steals, 3 blocks, great efficiency, just perfect. God, it's a shame that Draymond Green wasn't playing in this game because he was suspended. Dallas Mavericks, Dirk Nowitzki, 2011. Now, I gotta be honest, I do think Dirk's 2011 playoff run is a teeny bit overrated. It's one of the great greatest stories ever, considering the Mavs beat the two-time defending champion Lakers, a young and up-and-coming OKC team, and of course, the big three Miami Heat with LeBron, Wade, and Bob. But Dirk's actual play, while still great, wasn't historically great. But it still gets the nod because the Mavericks franchise history really doesn't 
have a lot of other options. And this is the only title in franchise history. But like I said, it still was a great playoff run and the best game that Dirk had came in game one of the 2011 Conference Finals versus OKC, where he put up 48 points on 15 shots, including 24 free throws. Just the absolute pinnacle of efficiency. Denver Nuggets, Nikola Jokic, 2023. I'm recording this after game one of the NBA Finals and Denver is currently three wins away from winning their first championship and Nikola Jokic is in the midst of a historic playoff run as we all know averaging an absolutely ridiculous 30 points 13 rebounds 10 assists on amazing efficiency it's just unbelievable and if he finishes the deal which he should this will go down as not just the best playoff run in Denver Nuggets history but one of the greatest playoff runs by any player in NBA history period Jokic's best game ironically so far in this postseason in my opinion was in game four versus Phoenix when he dropped 53 points and 11 assists in a loss. Detroit Pistons, Isaiah Thomas, 1990. When people think of the bad boy Pistons era, all they think about are the matchups with the Bulls and possibly the finals against the Lakers where the Pistons lost. Nobody ever really talks about 1990 during their second and final title, which came against the Portland Trailblazers, which would also double as Thomas's best postseason, averaging 21 points, six rebounds, and eight assists on very good efficiency and capping it off with a stellar finals including what I felt was his best performance of the postseason in the title clinching game four win putting up 32 points four rebounds five assists and three steals on amazing efficiency Golden State Warriors Rick Barry 1975 you're probably saying to yourself Rick Barry really not Steph or KD and yeah that's what I'm telling you you can say I might be being a little bit of a hater but to me the two KD titles don't count for Steph and Steph's other two championships were very debatable when you're adjusting for era compared to Rick Barry's 1975 run. But to me, what gave Barry the edge is that he won the championship as a massive underdog, whereas Steph's teams were expected to win every time he did. Rick finished the 75 title run, averaging 28 points, six rebounds, and six assists without a three-point line, mind you, and three steals a game. The best game of his playoff run to me came in game three of the 1975 finals, when he had 38 points and six rebounds and five assists to go up 3-0 on the heavily favored Washington Bullets. Houston Rockets, Hakeem Olajuwon, 1995. The choice for Houston came down to two seasons, either Hakeem's 94 title run or his 95 title run, and I went with 95 simply because I felt like his scoring was so much better. For whatever reason, though, the advanced numbers really don't like Hakeem's playoff run as much as they probably should, and his 94 advanced stats are a lot better than his 95 advanced stats, but I mean, just 33 points, 10 rebounds, Rebounds, four and a half assists, a steal, three blocks, hyper efficient. Really, I don't know what more you can ask for. And the cherry on top of Hakeem's legendary playoff run came in game five of the 95 Conference Finals when he put up 42 points, nine rebounds, eight assists, and five blocks on 63% shooting. Indiana Pacers, Reggie Miller, 2000. The Pacers have made one NBA Finals trip in their franchise history, even though they have come excruciatingly close many other times in the Conference Finals. Reggie Miller is considered the best player in franchise history by many people and he finally broke through in 2000 to get to the finals averaging 24 points two rebounds and three assists per game yes reggie wasn't exactly the most well-rounded player but he could shoot and that was never more evident than in game six of the 2000 eastern conference finals when he clinched his only finals appearance of his career in his fifth conference championship appearance against the knicks a team that he was known for having huge games against putting up 34 points five rebounds and four steals on great efficiency. His team would then get violated by Shaq in the finals as a reward. Los Angeles Clippers, Elton Brand, 2006. Not a lot of choices to be made here for a franchise that's made one conference finals appearance, so I had to go with Elton Brand in 2006. In my opinion, Brand is one of the most underrated players of all time, and I almost went with Kawhi Leonard, but he's played three postseasons with the Clippers and gotten hurt early in two of them, while the other resulted in a blown 3-1 win lead. So Brand got the nod in a postseason where he averaged 25 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, nearly 3 blocks on 55% shooting with great advanced stats and falling just one game short of the conference finals. His best game was in game 1 of the semifinals versus Phoenix. Even though Clippers lost, Brand put up 40 points on 18 of 22 shooting with 9 rebounds, 3 assists and 4 blocks. Los Angeles Lakers Shaquille O'Neal, 2000 There are literally about 30 individual postseasons by Lakers players that would be the best for other franchises
franchises, but the Lakers are probably the most decorated and successful franchise in NBA history. Would I go with Magic or Kobe or LeBron or Kareem or Wilt or Jerry West? There's so many to choose from, but in the end, I had to go with the Diesel's 2000 campaign, where he averaged 31 points, 15 rebounds, 3 assists, and 2 blocks on 56% shooting with amazing advanced metrics that was topped off with his best performance, in my opinion, which came in Game 1 of the NBA Finals versus the Pacers, when he had 43 points, 19 rebounds, 4 assists, and 3 steals on 68% shooting to secure the first of 3 straight championships. Memphis Grizzlies, Zach Randolph, 2011. Zebo endeared himself to Grizzlies fans everywhere pretty quickly after arriving in Memphis, especially with his 2011 playoff run, where he averaged 22 points, 11 rebounds, and 2 assists per game, which included a massive upset of the one-seeded Spurs in the first round. Randolph's monster 31.11 rebound game on 55% shooting in Game 6 put away the Spurs for good and helped cement one of the most memorable runs in Memphis franchise history. Miami Heat, LeBron James, 2012. I can already hear all the bitching and complaining from Nee Wade fans saying, how could you not take 2006? It was a historic finals performance and D Wade did it without a super team. Blah, 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 blah. Statistically, LeBron's 2012 playoff run is the best individual postseason in the history of the Miami Heat. He averaged 30 points a game, 10 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals, a block on 50% shooting, led the playoffs in basically every single advanced metric, and had the legendary Game 6 performance versus the Celtics facing elimination on the road where he put up 45 points, 15 rebounds, and 5 assists on 73% shooting. Milwaukee Bucks, Giannis Antetokounmpo, 2021. It was between Giannis and Kareem for the best playoff run in Bucks history, but I decided to go with Giannis due to his better stats and simply better competition than what Kareem was facing in the early 70s. I mean, Giannis did average 30 points, 13 rebounds, 5 assists on 57% shooting with great advanced metrics, and he capped it all off in Game 6 of the Finals with a 50-point, 14 rebound game on 64% shooting, while also shooting 90% from the foul line. Oh yeah, and he had 5 blocks as well. Pretty good! Minnesota Timberwolves, Kevin Garnett, 2000. Probably the easiest selection on the list. The Timberwolves have made one conference finals appearance in their franchise history. Kevin Garnett is by far their best player in franchise history, and by far his best playoff run was in 2004, when he averaged 24 points, 15 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 blocks on 52% shooting, and he had probably his greatest playoff game ever in Game 7 of the Western Conference Semis versus the Kings, where he put up 32 points and 21 rebounds in a close win and four steals and five blocks. New Orleans Pelicans, Chris Paul, 2008. Another franchise that has never made a conference finals appearance, but the closest they came to making one came in 2008 when a young Chris Paul put up a great postseason, averaging 24 points, 11 assists, and two steals a game and over 50% shooting and going to game seven in the second round. Although in typical Chris Paul fashion, his team did blow a 3-2 lead, but at the time, nobody knew how Paul's career would turn out, so this was just, oh, he'll get him next year. Nevertheless, Paul's best performance of the postseason came in Game 2 of the 2008 first round versus Dallas, where he put up 32 points and 17 assists on 63% shooting. Just a monster. New York Knicks, Willis Reed, 1970. For such a quote-unquote historic franchise like the Knicks, there really aren't many great individual playoff runs. By far the most memorable was Willis Reed in 1970, which is most famous for him walking out of the tunnel badly hurt in Game 7 of the Finals. Even though I felt like... Well, while Frazier deserved Finals MVP, Willis Reed still had a great postseason. The 1970 MVP put up 24 points a game and 14 rebounds a game on 47% shooting, and he did have a couple of monster performances in the Finals versus Will Chamberlain, with the most notable coming in Game 3 of the 70 Finals, when Reed had 38 points and 17 rebounds on 57% shooting. Oklahoma City, Seattle Supersonics, Gus Williams, 1979. You're probably saying to yourself, who the fuck is Gus Williams? another lost star from the 70s. But that doesn't take away how great his title run in 1979 was, when he averaged 27 points a game, 4 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2 steals on 48% field goal shooting. He had great advanced stats, and he capped off his great postseason with his best performance in Game 4 of the 1979 Finals, dropping 36 points and 4 assists on 52% shooting to put the Sonics up 3-1 in a series they would eventually win in 5 games. It's the only championship in the Sonic's Thunder franchise history. Looking at
looking at you, Kevin Durant. Orlando Magic, Shaquille O'Neal, 1995. I almost went with Dwight Howard in 2009, and that's really what this came down to. I ended up going with Shaq just because his offense was a lot better, and even though he got swept in the finals versus Hakeem, his finals performance was a lot better than Dwight's was versus the Lakers, but it was very, very close either way. Regardless, young Shaq averaged 26 points, 12 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 blocks on 58% shooting in the playoff run, which included giving the Michael Jordan Bulls the only playoff loss he suffered over the last seven postseasons of his career. Shaq's best performance to me came in Game 5 of the Conference Finals versus Indy, when he had 35 points, 13 rebounds on 62% shooting, although his free throw bugaboos popped up once again. Philadelphia 76ers, Wilt Chamberlain, 1967. Wilt is such an interesting case. He's one of the biggest, consistent postseason jokers ever, and yet he was still so talented that he has one of the best playoff runs ever. In 1967, he put up 22 points a game, 29 rebounds, and 9 assists per game on 58% shooting with great advanced metrics to win his first championship. His 76ers team also defeated the Celtics, which is the only time in Bill Russell's 13-year career where he'd lost a playoff series when healthy. The Big Dipper's best performance of the postseason? Game 5 of the Eastern Division Finals, when he put up 29 points, 36 rebounds, and 13 assists on 63% shooting. Wilt's dominance in 1967 just makes you wonder, why wasn't this more common? Phoenix Suns, Charles Barkley, 1993. The Suns have yet to win an NBA championship in their history, but that doesn't mean they haven't had some great individual playoff runs. Steve Nash, Amari Stoudemire, Devin Booker, but to me, Sir Charles' run in 1993 is the best of them all. When he averaged 27 points a game, 14 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals, and a block on 48% shooting, with great advanced metrics. His best performance of the postseason, to me, came in Game 5 of the 93 Conference Finals versus Seattle, when he had 43 points, 15 rebounds, and 10 assists on 73% shooting. Portland Trailblazers, Bill Walton, 1977. The Trailblazers have won one NBA championship in their franchise history, and the catalyst behind it was Big Red, aka Bill Walton, who was amazing but literally never stayed healthy, except for this playoff run, where he averaged 18 points, 15 rebounds, 6 assists, and 3 blocks per game on 51% shooting, before leading a 2-0 series comeback in the NBA Finals versus the heavily favored Dr. J 76ers. Walton capped off the title run with his best performance in Game 6 of the Finals, putting up 20 points, 23 rebounds, 7 assists, and 8 blocks. It's almost a 100% guarantee that he did this while high on marijuana. Sacramento Kings, Oscar Robertson, 1963. Back when the Kings were known as the Cincinnati Royals, and the Big O was considered one of the three or four best players in the world. Thanks largely to Oscar's brilliance, the Royals came within one game of making the finals, losing in seven in the divisional finals to Bill Russell's Celtics. That doesn't take away from Oscar's incredible postseason, where he had 32 points a game, 13 rebounds, and nine assists per game on 47% shooting, with great advanced metrics as well. The best game of Oscar's playoff run that year came in Game 1 of the Divisional Finals, where he put up 43 points, 14 boards, and 10 assists on a stellar 68% shooting. San Antonio Spurs, Tim Duncan, 2003. This really wasn't that hard of a choice, as Tim Duncan is the greatest player in the history of the Spurs, and 2003 was by far his best playoff run, especially one that ended in a championship. Tim A averaged 24 points, 15 rebounds, 5 assists, and 3 blocks per game on 53% shooting. He had a historically great postseason in the advanced stats as well, and had a great finals performance, which included his best performance of the playoffs, in my opinion, in Game 1 versus the Nets, when he put up 32 points, 20 rebounds, 6 assists, 3 steals, and 7 blocks on 65% shooting. Toronto Raptors, Kawhi Leonard, 2019. This one really wasn't that difficult. Kawhi was the clear-cut best player on the Raptors' only championship in franchise history, and also had a all-time great title run, averaging 31 points, 9 rebounds, 4 assists on great efficiency. His best moment, in my opinion, wasn't the famous game-winning buzzer beater in Game 7 versus Philly, but Game 5 versus the Bucks on the road in a series tied 2-2, when he dropped 35 points, 7 rebounds, and 9 assists, including having a massive fourth quarter to seal the deal in a series that the Raptors would go on to win in 6. And he did all of this saying just 5 words all postseason. Incredible. Utah Jazz, Carmelo, 1998. Hey 
everybody, it's Carl Malone. We all love him, don't we? <laughs> Not really. Anyway, there weren't that many great options to choose from, obviously, so I had to go with Malone's 98 playoff run, where he averaged 26, 11, and 3 on 47% shooting, which was well below his normal regular season efficiency as per Carl Malone's standards. He had good advanced metrics, although again, well below what he had in the regular season, and his best performance came in Game 5 of the 98 Finals, where he helped Utah stave off elimination temporarily by putting up 39 points, 9 rebounds, and 5 assists on 63% shooting. And finally, the Washington Wizards slash Bullets, Elvin Hayes, 1978. There really weren't a lot of great choices here, so I went with Elvin Hayes' 1978 title run, where he averaged 22 points a game, 13 rebounds a game, 2 assists, steal and a half, and 2.5 and blocks a game on 49% shooting, while leading the league in several advanced stat categories. The Big E's best performance, in my opinion, came in Game 4 of the Eastern Conference Finals, where he put up 35 points, 19 rebounds, and 3 blocks on 63% shooting. Despite this, Hayes would not win Finals MVP. That would go teammate Wes Unseld, who averaged 9 points a game in the Finals, while Hayes averaged 21 points and 12 rebounds. All the Steph Curry fans bitch and complain about him getting robbed of the 2015 Finals MVP. What about all my Elvin Hayes fans out there? Come on, we, we need to start a petition right now that goes back in time and hands the 1978 Finals MVP to Elvin Hayes. Let's do what's right. Come on, Adam Silver. Thanks for watching. If you haven't yet, please press that subscribe button. There's plenty more great content on the way. Take care.